I always like to draw. I just had like a disposition for that or whatever, but like I just continued to do it, you know, until I was older, until I got into high school and everything. But I think most like little kids, you know, they all little kids draw, but then they all kind of some of them like stop at a certain point, you know. And I just always kept going, but I didn't really give it much thought as like far as like serious uh, artwork until I was in high school. What was my artwork like when I was in high school? Well, I guess I mean I was primarily a like a cartoonist and an animator, but I mean I painted too, but that stuff was all abstract and it was very like mathematical. So I painted a lot of lines, stuff <laughs> like that. Was, you know, there was no realism. It was all just stuff out of my head. You know, so probably around my junior year was when I really started thinking about art seriously, and uh, yeah, started taking a lot of art classes and. Uh, learning more about like formal art, like learning about painting and learning about art history and stuff like that. And that uh, definitely got like the ball rolling and got my mind thinking about, you know, painting seriously or drawing more seriously. Originally I was, I was actually thinking more of being like in digital art, like doing animation and stuff like that. So I was really into the computer art thing. But uh, yeah, eventually that shifted more to just painting and drawing. When did I think about art as a profession? Um, well, I mean, I guess I never, I don't know if I had that in like the forefront of my mind. I, I hadn't even really thought, I didn't really, I never thought I was gonna go to college, you know, when I was like in early, early high school. It wasn't until like my, you know, late junior and the senior year where I thought, where people had suggested to me that I should probably like pursue it more and go, or go to college. And um, so yeah, that's I mean, it was in high school that when I decided I would go to college and then it kind of rolled from there, you know. Um, it was when, and then I mean, later on in college, it was like that's when my teachers there were like, you know, you could probably try to, you know, paint professionally. Or I don't, I guess I wasn't even thinking about that early in college. I don't know what I was thinking about, <laughs> you know. It's my college art experience. Like, I think uh, I think everybody kind of has like those similar like fights with you know art school. I mean, it's not an easy thing to go into at first, and there's a lot of strong personalities and they're all over the board and it, right in like right around in the middle of college I had a really hard time you know but um once I got through that and I was in like the you know like higher level classes and stuff like people really you know like t my teachers really took notice of me and they really helped me out and you know, like got me shows and nominated me for different things to do and um yeah I was introduced to watercolor by a friend of mine um when I was a freshman in college, and I, you know, I'd already like had, what drew a certain way and had all these like my you know drafting skills that I developed at that time, and it was all pretty much cartooning, you know, and uh, it, he introduced me to it, and it just like clicked, you know, it was like perfect for what I was doing. I won the Fulliard competition, it's called, so I got to show at their art gallery in downtown Milwaukee, with you know some like famous artists and stuff. And I didn't think I'd win it either. I thought you know, I, there was so many other like strong painters that were in that generation of artists at UWM, but they gave it to me and I got to show there and it was like, you know, a, like this like big deal and I don't know, it was, it, was, it was crazy to like, you know, like deal with an art gallery too and like figure out what that's like and like pricing stuff and so it was like my, that was my first real like true taste of like art as like an industry. It was a really great experience, you know, and, Definitely got me thinking more about like, well, that it was like that, and then like meeting people who actually were like, you know, had studios in Milwaukee, and like, actually ran them, you know, as their personal business of you know painting portraiture or whatever it was they did. So that was probably the first time I was, I was like, okay, maybe I could make that work and really do that. My first job out of college was animating, animating Christian children's films, and I got that through UWM. Somebody referred me because uh, this guy needed a watercolorist. And I did that until the project was completed, and that was it. And in college, I, I mean, I was definitely had like a concern with like violence, and that was the kind of stuff I did. And then it was this total turnaround where I had to paint, you know, horses. I painted, yeah, I had to, I had to paint like a. It was something insane. It was like a, I had to paint 150 horses. That was my sequence, and it ended up being like three seconds long. And that's that was my job for like nine months. And it was. Uh, it was quite an experience, and I don't think I'd do it again, but what came after that? Well, I was kind of, 
I had no idea what I wanted to do, which is like, you know, the typical terrifying period after you get out of college. And I'm like, you know, I just got done with that animation job and I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I had a friend who was in uh, the United States Antarctic program. Almost on a whim, I was like, you should, you know, help me out. You know, you should, you should hook me up with that job, you know. And it was like, I never, I never in a million years thought I'd ever go. Started, you know, filling out the paperwork and then one thing led to another and then I was at the hospital getting the tests done and then I was getting phone calls and like, before I knew it, I was like packing my bags and moving to Antarctica. <laughs> uh, well, I worked for, I mean, uh, like a subsidy of the United States Antarctic program. So I was a janitor and I lived in an area called the Ross Dependency, which is due south of New Zealand. And yeah, I was, I lived there for five months and cleaned toilets and, you know, met people and went hiking and lived in, you know, the 24 hour daylight. And it was incredible. I mean, it's like, you know, definitely like a life changing experience. McMurdo is really beautiful because it's like up in the mountains and there's, you know, like volcanoes erupting around you. And I mean, it's like nothing else, like nothing else on earth, you know. I didn't paint there because I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And it was actually better that way because that way I could really like take it all in and I didn't have to worry about feeling like I was obligated to paint all the time. I could just take in the experience. You know. uh, where else have I been? I've been to the Middle East. That was actually probably like, as far as just like well, non-Antarctica non stuff, just like trips I took. That was the most, that was definitely the most incredible. That was really neat. Um, and I've been to Europe four times now and that's been like a serious, uh, asset and if you're a painter I mean getting to see all that stuff it's I mean absolutely every, every city you go to is totally art saturated and there's places like that in the US I mean Chicago's like that New York's like that but um just being around that stuff and those buildings and getting to see all that stuff like it really helps in advancing your you know like your skills and opens your mind up to all those ideas from you know all these centuries that people have been working on this stuff most of my influence comes um, and initially it was Austrian painting and German painting, or it comes from American painters that were influenced by that. So initially it was people like Egon Schiele, like, I mean, he's, there's something about that stuff that's like really, you know, like uh, engaging, you know, and he gets like, it just gets like so much emotion across with such little detail. And it was really like all those new ideas that I, I really liked at the time. And I was introduced to, to that stuff when I was still in high school. More lately I've been looking at like, American painting, like I love Grant Wood and Andrew Wyeth and I love Peter Bloom and I just think like th those paintings are so alive, you know, and they really rejected, um, you know, abstraction and all like what were like the big trends at the time in New York and they were just, you know, Grant Wood was content to just stay in Iowa. I mean, he didn't, he didn't, he was, that's where he needed to be to paint and do, make the kind of work that he wanted to make. You know, he didn't rush off to New York or, you know, move to Paris or, you know, whatever it was to make that stuff. He did his own thing. And, I, I really like that, you know, and there's something like distinctly uh, Midwestern about that too. So, yeah, those are the, those are the big ones though, and the, all the all like the German Romantic painters and all that stuff all the way through up until Expressionism. 